Hey everyone, this is a quick run through setting up a 714 bed in Pro Tools to the internal Atmos renderer. There's a number of reasons you might want to do this using immersive reverbs, converting ambisonics to 714, anything basically you want to get to the renderer in 714. This is a workaround to the issue of the Dolby Atmos bed being in 712. So it ends up panning differently in the height speakers to how it does when you use an object. So uh, we'll have a quick look at how an object pans around and then compare it to a bed. This is in binaural, so if you've got headphones and you want to chuck them on, uh, this would be a good time. So this is just a little guitar track I've got. So everything they're panning as we would hope, uh, particularly the, the thing to notice is in the top height speakers, the top front and top rear, that when it goes to a front corner, it uh, only comes out that one channel. So now we'll have a look at what happens when you assign that to the bed instead, being 712, and what happens when you pan into the corners. So a little different when you pan into the height speakers using the bed, uh, because it's only 0.2, the four channels in the height speakers are being down mixed to two and both coming out the front and rear speakers in equal amounts. So with uh, immersive reverbs or ambisonics, it's not ideal. The workaround is to create a bed, combination of a bed and objects that are all fed off another bus and we'll go have a look at the IO and see how we have to set up our IO setup to get that happening. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to the bus page. We're going to create a new bus 7.1.4. There it is. Uh, just call it 7.1.4 bed you like call it whatever you like call it james whatever don't auto create the subpaths at this point now once we've got that created we're going to go back in and create some subpaths so what we need to make is one 7.1 which is going to feed all of our lower stuff and then we're also going to create two stereo buses and these are going to be our object buses that will feed the top front and the top rear. So I'm just going to name these. And this is the one for the top and then one for the rear. Some people would probably do four mono objects. I'm happy doing pairs and it, it keeps it simpler. There's less buses. Then in here, you've got to actually move where these sub paths tap into the main bus so our top front you can see right top left top so i'm dragging them over to match there and then our rear tops and that is good to go as far as our busing so we've essentially created a 714 bus and then these other buses are where we're tapping in to that bus to feed auxiliary inputs, which we're then going to send out to the renderer. So now back in the edit window, we need to create a couple of things. I put it all in a basic folder, so I'll create a basic folder first. Then I'm also going to create a 7.1 auxiliary. Yep, and two more 
auxiliary inputs which are stereo. Create. And there they are. So uh, the first one, I'm going to rename that into the 7.1 component of our 7.4. I am going to rename it, I promise. There we go. Um, these, this one, this auxiliary input is going to feed the top front and this one top rear. Okay, they're all named. Now I'm just going to drop those in, inside that basic folder. So they're there when I need it, I can minimize it. I can save it as a, a preset, a track preset, which is a good thing to do because that will actually include the buses as well. And then whenever you want this again, you don't have to go through all this again. You can just pull it up from your track presets. That's in here, save track preset. But I'm not really going to go into that right now. Uh, next is the assignments for these. Uh, the 7.1. You can it can send it direct to the seven one or send it straight to the full bed path. Um, if you send it to the bed path, you'll get the binaural render settings. But if you change them on there, it will affect everything going to the bed. Just worth knowing. Uh, top front to a pair of objects. Top rear to another pair of objects, and switch the busing for the objects on. Um, now this is the top front pair. So what you need to do is. I don't know why they're not linked. Uh, assign those and pan them up to the top front. And then you're going to need to do likewise with the top rear. But obviously you pan them to the rear. And up high. There we go. And pan them up to the top. That's all good. So that's your output set up for the subtracks within this bus. Uh, now we need to set the inputs. So the 7.1 is coming from the 7.1 bed and the top front. Remember we named that bus top front, so that goes to feed that. And then we have the other bus, which was top rear. That's why it's a good idea to name those buses while you're creating them. Now, that's all pretty much set up. So if we go back to our original guitar that was set sending out to the bed that's how it was um, and we now reassign that guitar track to the 714 bed and now we'll be able to get panning into the corners even though we're going to a bed um, so we'll have a listen and just keep an eye on the Dolby meters over the right So we're not getting that mixed down at the top. So that's uh, pretty much it. I might just mention when I was panning around there and then I was going up to the height, I use a trackball and uh, if you hold shift down, suddenly it turns into height panning, which is a pretty handy thing to have. So this would also work like for a reverb, but if you were doing it for a reverb, you would just create the reverb on a normal auxiliary channel the way you, you normally would, but then output that auxiliary to the 7.1.4 bus. Uh, Cinematic Rooms is a great, you know, standard, not too expensive one that will do 7.1.4. Uh, same with Ambisonics, you just put the converter on, something like the Rode Sound Field Converter, and you just bus it out to the 7.1.4 bed, and everything will go where it should be. So, oh, look, I hope that helps someone.